Good morning, Brian. How are you today? Good morning, Daniel. I am doing really great here in Northern California. Well, thank you very much for uh, accepting our invitation for our podcast My of the pleasure. CEO Coffee. This is uh, really appreciated uh, from uh, on our side. Um, you're the CEO, founder of Red Crow. Can you briefly introduce Red Crow for our people listening to the podcast? Yeah, absolutely. Red Crow was founded almost five years ago, and it is a direct investment marketing platform for early stage healthcare innovation. It was born out of the 2012 Jobs Act that said early stage companies could actually begin advertising to the world uh, investment opportunities. And over the years, Red Crow has shifted really from that mindset to creating an overall platform and ecosystem within healthcare. Very good. And where's the idea comes from? Well, you know, we were looking around, we, we just saw this opportunity that when the Jobs Act was written, there were so many early stage innovating companies out there that were trying to attract capital. And at the same time, you know, coming from the world of Morgan Stanley, where I was a wealth manager there, I had seen that there was this shift in a lot of high net worth investors looking to invest in early stage innovation outside of the public markets. But trying to find access, Daniel, to those kind of companies is very challenging if you don't live in the right markets, the right part of the country here in the U.S. or in the world, or maybe you didn't go to the right university where uh, you know, innovation and entrepreneurialism is, is a big deal. And so when we began looking at some of the early platforms, what we saw, Daniel, was this uh, kind of like my, my co-founder, Jerry Harrison, will also often refer to it as a phone book of listings, where it was everything and anything. And to really attract quality companies, we thought, let's focus on one vertical. One of the things we knew we wanted to do, Daniel, was um, social impact companies. And just by the pure nature of social impact, that can range from many different aspects and different industries. So we narrowed it down even more and both Jerry and I had some experience in working with uh, early stage healthcare innovative companies in the past. So we focused on healthcare and it really has just snowballed from there. So today you're doing only the healthcare, but who is your typical customer that is approaching Red Crow? Yeah, so when we started, you know, we really were marketing to these companies in which we call, Daniel, they were stuck in the valley of death. And the valley of death refers to companies that have raised capital from friends or family. That's typically the seed round. And they need to get to, say, a place where a VC or a family office or an investment bank will put a large investment in. But to get to that place, you need to show growth often. You need to show momentum. Maybe you need to get through the first phase of, of FDA. And so we were really focused on companies that were more than just an idea on a napkin. They actually had some traction. Maybe they had raised capital in the past from, say, friends, family, or just early funding. And it is amazing, Daniel, because it has shifted where it's not just about the very early stage companies anymore. It has a lot to do with companies that are seeking not only capital, but they're looking for introductions. They're looking for partners. They're looking for, say, pilot programs within different healthcare organizations. And so Red Crow has built this ecosystem where um, it tends to be smart capital coming into these companies, companies um, that are looking for investors that aren't just going to put the money in, but they have resources to support the company. And now we have partners in, in investors who are actually looking for opportunities to further their uh, programs or, or their organizations. So it, we've seen this shift, Daniel, but you know, for the most part is for companies that just need more exposure within the world of uh, early stage healthcare. 
So in your expansion of the Red Crow ecosystem that you're having, so you have different partners, uh, obviously you can see why the different partners can, can gain out of being partner of the ecosystem, but what is it, the opportunity for you as Red Crow to have all these partners all together? Yeah, so, you know, Daniel, I think this is something that um, you will completely understand. When you're a healthcare company, which is probably different than most industries, you can go out and raise $3 million, $5 million. But as a healthcare company, if you don't have the right partners, the right advisors, the right relationships, maybe the right pilot program, so say a Cleveland Clinic or a Mayo Clinic or a Griffin Hospital in Connecticut, for instance, you, know, you can go from a community hospital all the way to one of these large hospitals. But if you don't have somebody willing to bring you in and support you and do a pilot program or the right advisors or the right strategics, you can raise that capital and burn right through it and be no further ahead. So for us, the way we looked at the Red Crow ecosystem membership, which we often refer to as our REM program, it's about finding quality partners. And many of these partners have existed within Red Crow over the last four years but it was done in a very informal basis. Maybe they were making recommendations for companies to come talk to Red Crow, or we might be saying, hey, you should go talk to this organization. I think they can help you. So what we decided to do, Daniel, is make it an actual program where these uh, partners of ours, all of them have agreed to give up something, their time, their resources, and many, many of them have never done anything like this, but what they see it as is not only a way to give back, but as a way to really help advance healthcare innovation. And maybe for some of them, these will become future clients. And on the flip side, what we've told the companies is, you know, meet with our partners. They're willing to give you their time, their resources, their advice. And it might be down the road, you say, I wanna work with one of these partners but I know working with one of these partners is going to mean we need to be further along. So it gives the company an opportunity to tell investors that when we raise this capital, when we hit certain milestones, we're going to go work with this partner over here because they're going to help us get to this point. And that makes investors feel really good that you know exactly what the roadmap is. You know actually how you're going to use your capital versus just saying, hey, we're going to put it into operations or salaries and not understand like how's that gonna advance the company. And then on the flip side, for these partners to be able to see this pipeline of innovative companies at the early stage, they're first in line to become partners of theirs and, and have these companies be become potential um, clients. And the thing about it too, Daniel, is all the different partners in the REM program, they all serve different aspects of a company's life cycle. So um, Lock Corporation is a member of the RRM ecosystem that you're having, and we are very proud and happy to be part of this ecosystem. But can you elaborate more to what kind of services um, companies could find in, in this ecosystem of Red Crow? Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Um, the approach we took was looking at the entire life cycle of a company really focused on supporting them in their fundraise, and then during their fundraise, supporting them with partners that can make introductions, perhaps to even potential investors, but certainly partners that can add value to the company. And I think that's what's really important. We know that for many of these uh, companies, even a couple few clients adds value to the companies and to their bottom line. So that's the goal there. So a few of the things that we have within the Red Crow ecosystem Red Crow actually provides, and that's a public profile with, within the redcrow.com platform. And we move companies through in a, in a couple ways. Um, every company that joins gets a public profile and what we call the Discover Supernovas. And what the Discover Supernovas is, it's an opportunity to give the company's exposure to anybody who comes to Red Crow from all over the world. And we allow companies there to showcase um, what they do, what they're, what they're innovating, how they're disrupting the market. We let um, profiles of the founders um, up on Discover Supernovas. 
And our audience gets to take surveys, they get to rate the companies, they get to leave comments. And so for us, that exposure has shown to be very valuable in that sometimes partnerships investments will happen, will happen just because a company has exposure on the Discover Supernova. We feature them in social media, we do newsletters. And so that's really the public facing, the marketing uh, that we do. And then we have different programs that focus around design and development. So our partners at Zymedica focus on that. As you mentioned, LOC, you know, being able to support some of our companies um, with international presence and relationships, very important. Um, and so several other partners, Experian, Scale, um, our partners at the Innovation Institute out of Newport Beach, California, they became our partners after year one. And they've been tremendous in supporting Red Crow with different advisors. Um, the Innovation Institute is backed by seven major healthcare systems. And so their community consists of 300,000 strong of healthcare professionals at all different levels. We have a wonderful collaboration with the American Medical Association where they've created uh, this Red Crow AMA hub where uh, collaborators such as advisors, doctors, um, investors can all create profiles and be part of a conversation. So it's almost like taking a LinkedIn and Facebook and creating it into this hub of healthcare professionals. Um, and then on the flip side, we have a software that we use called the Main Stage, um, which I happen to be a co-founder in. And this is an opportunity for companies to tell their story in a very effective way. And companies can use that on a private or a public um, platform. And we can talk more about that, of course. And then we have cap table management tools um, to support companies that once they raise money, how do they manage their cap table? How do they stay um, up to date and, and in front of their investors, which is a very important part of raising capital. Um, and then of course we have Alera Health, which is another big partner of ours who is able to help from FDA approvals to guidance on um, advisors, strategics, and so when you think about everything I'm saying here, Daniel, it's like, you're not going to get lost in the shuffle. You're going to meet somebody along the way in our ecosystem that is going to support you um, through different aspects of not only fundraising, but moving and advancing your mission. That's, uh, that's amazing. Uh, Brian, you have some partners in the ecosystem that are relating to uh, related to investments. And as you know, in the US regulation for crown investment is somehow complex. How do you navigate around that? Yeah, so um, we have two partners, uh, WeFunder and Republic. And WeFunder and Republic were two of the first US approved what we call Reg CF platforms. And here in the US, um, this was a big deal because for the first time ever, non-accredited investors could actually get access to private investments. And in the past, it had only been focused on an accredited investor. So for the audience's sake, Daniel, I'll just focus on what an accredited investor is in the United States. An accredited investor is considered to be any individual that makes over $200,000 a year. And then on the flip side, it would be any individual who has a net worth of over a million dollars, not including your primary residence. So in the scope of things, and depending on you, even what part of the country you live in, there's a lot of folks that don't make $200,000 a year. Just because the cost of living doesn't require they have to make that, it doesn't mean they don't make a healthy living making say $175,000 a year. And then there's a number of folks that don't have a net worth of a million dollars. And so they've been locked out of being able to invest in private equity. And it's always been this weird thing, Daniel. It's like, they can't invest in something that they know, even put a little bit of money in it that could end up returning a significant investment. Even though we all know these are considered high risk investments and you could lose all your money the SEC and the FINRA have taken a very conservative approach in the past when it comes to a non-accredited investor and trying to protect them from losing all their money. And maybe a company that never had a chance. You know, you got, you got sold and you put all your money in it and it blew up. 
The only thing I've always said is, Daniel, what's interesting is that same non-accredited investor could go to Las Vegas and gamble all their money away. You know, so why not invest in something you actually know something about rather than just taking a flyer on, you know, Vegas or, or a scratch ticket, for instance. But um, when that rule changed in 2012, some of these early platforms that service the non-accredited investors came to be. And we've watched the space very closely because Red Crow had only been focused on the accredited investors. With the accredited investors, there's a lot less limitations to be able to invest versus what the Reg CF non-accredited investment platforms were offering. And this year, early this year, the rules changed um, that said a company that was limited at being able to raise a million dollars in 12 months as part of Reg CF can now raise $5 million. Uh, special purpose vehicles are now allowed and they weren't in the past. And that means these small investors uh, don't have to sit alone on the cap table. They can be part of a fund or a um, investment vehicle. And then the accredited investors were limited to a $100,000 investment in a Reg CF deal. They now can invest up into the entire 5 million if they wanted. So we decided because they've already had this head start, but we also know they were looking for quality healthcare companies for their platform, that the collaboration and partnership made a lot of sense. So what we will do now is we will work with WeFunder and Republic and for any of the companies that wanna go the Reg CF route, we will co-promote that investment opportunity and send our audience over to WeFunder and Republic. And the way that they make money is they take a percentage of the capital that's raised as their revenue, whereas Red Crow has more of a listing fee um, or a subscription agreement within our REM. And we're just making the WeFunder and the Republic relationships part of that REM program. That's amazing. And that's going to bring in tremendous opportunities to, um, to manufacturers and for you at, the, at Red Crow. Um, in that direction, you developed the main stage and you, you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but can you go a little bit more in detail? What is the offering of the main stage for manufacturers raising money? Yeah, so, you know, Daniel, the, the thing that we've learned in, you know, working with companies and helping them market their investment opportunity over the last four and a half years has been how important the storytelling aspect of what the company is doing is and how important talking about the investment opportunity is. In our research, we've seen that the average time an investor spends looking at what is referred to as a pitch deck, so this would be your investment PDF PowerPoint, is anywhere from 30 seconds to less than two minutes. Wow. The main number is less than two minutes, but we've talked to investors that have said 30 minutes is more, more likely where they're at. And we've seen that that's extremely hard to get somebody excited in 30 seconds or even less than two minutes. So the main stage is a software that we created. It has a lot to do with storytelling. So presenting the company in a way in which it attracts an investor to spend time getting to know the company through different content. So that might be videos. That might be news, news articles. That might be a timeline that we've created. And then of course we have a deal tab where you can go in and actually look at the deal. We have an investor dashboard. So you can see communications to and from the company. And if you're an investor, you get to track the company's progress. You have a dial that shows what percent of the raise you actually own during that particular fundraise. So it becomes a very interactive enjoyable opportunity for the investor, but it also helps the company manage the outreach, see who's coming in and who's looking at your, what we call story vault, which is where all your videos reside, your images reside, different overviews and presentations if you want to include a presentation. And the great thing about the main stage, Daniel, is it's averaging close to nine minutes of eyeballs per investor, as opposed to the less than two minutes that a pitch deck presents. So we look at this main stage as a way to uh, replace the pitch deck, make it a very interactive experience. And the way that Red Crow uses it is every company that signs up with Red Crow 
gets access to the main stage. They get to create their story vault and then they can decide, do they want to do a private fundraise? So all these main stages are protected by email. So you've got to enter your email and then a password to be able to get into it. So it's a unique URL that doesn't go out to the world and you can't get everybody into it. But if you decide you actually want to do a public fundraise, then what we do is we put a tile on Red Crow, we removed the password protection of the main stage. And when someone clicks on your tile, it opens up into the main stage and therefore someone can come in. We even have a commit button. So if you go in Daniel and you're looking at a company and you get excited about them, you can click commit and begin the process of making an investment in the company. Um, this is amazing. Um, you, you've been mentioning, you know, the 30 seconds and the two minutes and the nine minutes. Um, what would you recommend for companies that are seeking investment to demonstrate or to focus to get that traction of the 30 seconds or a nine minutes, seven or whatever time that they have in front of them? What is the main point to focus on? Yeah, so, you know, we talk about these being early stage companies. And in the early days, we know that many times when a company goes and creates a pro forma, it's simply a projection, Daniel, of what the company thinks they can accomplish long-term. And very rarely does a company out of the gate stick to their pro forma. Things are always changing. And I think a lot of times emphasis is put on the pro forma as a way in which an investor or a company thinks an investor is gonna invest. But one of the things that we've learned really important is that people invest in people. And so being able to come across in a presentation like the main stage on who you are and why you were the right person to lead this company and this organization to success is really what many investors at this stage are looking for. And there's no way to fully accomplish that or for an investor to comprehend that in a PDF. And so what we've been using are different things such as medium um, articles, you know, let, let, let us hear your voice. And then most importantly, video content. So on the main stage, one of the first things an investor sees is a video. And the video has proven to be king over the last four and a half years, Daniel, that the video is what attracts that attention. And the video can be anything from this really well-produced video and they tend to be a little costly um, but we have many resources that we can provide to companies to get a well-produced video. But at the same time, the video could simply be like this format, Daniel, you and I talking. This is a great way for somebody who doesn't know you and doesn't know me to actually watch this podcast or listen to this podcast and get to know us. So even if you use your iPhone to send a message to potential investors as they come in to review your, your company, Right away, there's this established presence of here's who I am, here's a little bit about our fundraise, here's why I'm the right person to lead this company, and I invite you to take a look around at all our other materials. And then, of course, uh, one of the nice features, Daniela, of the um, main stage is the ability to follow up. And so we have built it so you stay very compliant. If you upload new information, new documents, maybe a new presentation, let the prospects and even your existing investors know that there's been some updates, especially prospects. You want to make sure they're looking at the most up-to-date information. So we've seen companies upload a new presentation, change their investment documents, let, let everybody know via this tool that we have within the main stage. And you can see that folks actually do come back in. And what that tells an investor is, wow, this is a very responsive and responsible company. I am going to trust them with my investment because they're doing a nice job communicating out of the gate. So that's the other really important component, Daniel, is making sure the lines of communication with your prospects and investors are always open. There's nothing worse for an investor to invest and then to never hear from your company again. It's really like the surest way to have them never reinvest is the fact that, well, I haven't heard from you. And the only time I hear from you is when you're looking for more money. Yeah. Um, 
We, we see and we hear a lot about different platform that exists. Uh, there's a lot of people looking to raise money, obviously. So people will say, okay, Red Crow, um, any big success to prove that Red Crow is working? Anything that we can share? Yeah. Um, so it's important to know that Red Crow is not considered a broker dealer. So what we can't do is pitch the investment opportunities. We can't send emails out to potential investors saying, you know, our, our scientific and business committee reviewed this company and we think that this is a home run. We think you're going to make a ton of money. Um, broker dealers shouldn't be doing that anyway. Speaking like that, nothing is a guarantee. And I always tell investors, if anybody guarantees you something, run the other way, especially in the world of, of private investing and high risk investments. There's no sure bets. Um, and then the other thing is, because we're not a broker dealer, we don't take commission. We don't take success fees. And I think I mentioned that earlier. Yeah. So we rely on the platform to drive the traffic, to get the right audience there. And then we rely on the companies to showcase themselves, to attract the right investors. And it's really our job as Red Crow to be at the nexus of all of this happening. We do, Daniel, in the future, <clears throat> excuse me, we see Red Crow becoming a broker dealer because there's been way too much success in Red Crow acting as this conduit between deals and investments. But for now, we're not a broker dealer. So what I can say to you is we did a little bit of a research recently and we have seen that of all the companies um, so several hundred that have been on Red Crow, whether that's in the Discover Supernova platform or just in the Explore Investments where you can actually take in a live investment. Uh, to date, the companies that have come through Red Crow have raised $181 million. Wow. And some of those, you know, were fundraises of $350,000 all the way to $27 to $35 million um, investments. And it's just giving companies that presence to make these connections. Some are very early, some are further along. And I think that we have a nice um, diverse group of companies for diverse group of investors to be able to look at considering where they're at. And the nice thing about the platform too, Daniel, is the level of transparency that is provided when a company goes up on Red Crow, they're saying, you know, what we're, we're, we're claiming here and what we're saying we're doing is legit. And the reason is they've opened themselves up to this massive network where people can challenge them. People can, can question them. And you're not afraid to take on those challenges or those questions. You know, it's great when say we have a cardiac device and a cardiologist comes and says, well, I've seen 10 companies trying to do this. What makes you different? Or here's why I think you're going to be challenged. And that's what you ultimately want, because that gives investors confidence in saying, well, they're being challenged by some of the best. And on the flip side, some of the best might say, well, if you accomplish what you say you can do, we absolutely will want to use this in our, um, our operating room or in our healthcare system. And those are the things investors should be looking at is what are the end users within the healthcare system saying about a lot of these devices and even um, therapeutics. So we see um, tremendous success on raising the money. We see that ecosystem that is building up around uh, Red Crow. Uh, what is next for Red Crow? Well, you know, Daniel, um, something that you'll appreciate is we've been approached now by several organizations that would like to bring the Red Crow platform international. And I've always said, and, and my co-founder Jerry Harrison has always said, to do that right, we need the right individuals with feet on the ground in these different countries, understanding the landscape, understanding how investors in different markets are looking at these investment opportunities. We wanna bring international investments to Red Crow to invest in US-based companies. We wanna bring international companies to Red Crow to let US-based investors invest internationally and we think that having Red Crow in different markets, that international companies will attract more international dollars 
um, or even from their own homelands that they're currently not getting in front of. So we'd like to see that, Daniel. We'd, we'd like to see some advancement in moving Red Crow overseas and getting some of these innovative technologies um, in front of U.S. investors and vice versa. Brian, thank you so much for, uh, for the interview. And um, I know that you're doing some demo of the main stage uh, platform quite frequently. We're going to put the link uh, associated to this podcast so that people can uh, go and request a demo to see all that um, Red Crow ecosystem and the main stage. Um, thank you so much. And uh, hopefully that the success will continue for you. Thank you. Daniel, thank you. And it's a pleasure talking with you and, and sharing, you know, like-minded visions when it comes to healthcare innovation. So I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.